Welcome to the shop. We're taking a little break from planting in the garden because we have had, it feels like an eternity of rain and it's just not stopping. So we're gonna work on the Polaris a little bit today. It's in dire need of a few things, tires being one of them. We bought this machine used and it was almost like brand new when we got it, but we've put a lot of miles on it and I've got my assistant to help me today. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jack it up, take all the wheels and tires off and we are gonna flush out the brake fluid, put all new brake fluid in her. Set this back on the ground. Man, this makes this so difficult. We have now gained access to the brake master cylinder, and that's what holds your brake fluid. And the reason we're changing the brake fluid on this machine is last fall, we, I guess, had the brakes go out on it, and I've changed the pads. Those are all brand new. I've loosened them up so they're not rubbing the disc as much when you're not pressing on the brakes, if that makes any sense. I think it was doing that and it was getting them a little bit too hot. And the last thing that we really can do is change all the brake fluid. So that's what we're gonna do. It's pretty simple. Ariel's gonna be inside the machine. She's gonna be pushing the brakes to push fluid through the brake system. And I'm gonna start on the caliper, which is furthest away from the cylinder. So it's gonna be that back one over there. This is a six wheeler, but it only has uh, front brakes and then it has brakes on the mid axle. There's no brakes on the rear end. You ready to do it? Sure. Is that lefty loosey? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So let's loosen this leader valve and put this hose on it because we're about to lose a lot of fluid. Yeah. Is it coming out? Um, yes. It's clear. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's coming out. Yeah, it's coming out. Here. I'm trying to figure out how to get brake. How do you? How do you get brake fluid in there? That's like the, how do you get in there? We're getting all the old brake fluid out of the lines. Okay, let go. And just stop. Let's move to the next one. That's the old fluid. We'll have to dispose of that properly and we're, we're done with the brakes for now. And we're gonna move on to putting new tires on the Polaris. We've had this bad boy for uh, five years now and we bought it with low miles on it. It's a 2013, I think we bought it in like 2018, something like that. It only had like 200 or 300 miles on it. It now has almost 2,500 miles and this is the original set of tires. We've had some issues with them. We've popped, I'm pretty sure, like every single one. There's a lot of cracking on them just from being old, being in the cold, being in the heat, whatnot. So it was time to upgrade to new tires. We're gonna do pretty much the same size tire, but we're going with a different brand. The old ones are Swamp Lights, these are called IPT XTRs, and they look like they're gonna be an awesome tire. That's one of the downsides though, when you have a six wheeler, you gotta buy six tires, and you gotta change six tires. So let's change this uh, one up front first, and I guess we'll see how difficult this is gonna be today. The hardest part I think is gonna be breaking the old B. Let's see if I can just stomp on it. No. It's all lubricated now. Let's see if it goes on. Okay. I'll do the same to this side. But even better, because this is the hard side. 
that white stuff's really it looks like disco. lubricating. It's like super slick, you know. It's like it's weird. You should touch it. It's like waxy or something. It's, it's almost impossible, huh? These dang tires are real rigid. Yeah, they're... What kind of tool do they use? A machine. A machine. Put a 10 for now. Oh, my knees! Put your knee pads on! I'm gonna need my piece of foam or something. Let's stick this on and see what it looks like, man. Those are sweet. We got them done. We were doing that first one, and Errol and I both looked at each other and we were like, man, maybe we should have taken these tires in somewhere to get them put on for us. But we finally did it, and we did six of them. And then one of the front tires I accidentally put on backwards. So we had to take that one all the way off and put it back on the other, the other way, and it was pretty horrible. But I'm happy with the tires. They look pretty cool, and we will see how they perform next time we take them out. to get him excited anymore, huh? Test these new tires out, right? I never realized it tells you when you're not wearing a seatbelt. It does? It was flashing at us. There we go. I set the trip. You mean two bears or two fits? Right here. There's one right there. Oh, that is a bear. Oh, that's a pretty decent size one. And look at this one. That's a nice one. That looks like the front. That's a, that's a black bear, isn't it? If the nails are two. close, that is not a black bear. Egg. No, it's a big one. Nice. Great morning out here so far. It's about 11 o'clock a.m. and it's 60 degrees. You don't get days like this in Alaska that often. So we're taking advantage of it today. And we just spotted some bear prints. And we got a bear tag and we got a rifle. Maybe we'll see something today. You never know. But our main purpose of coming out here is to retrieve our trail cameras that we left out here on a moose carcass six months ago. So in the winter, we hauled them all out here. And we're going to take the six-wheeler out. We're testing out the tires, testing out the brakes. We got the dog with us. And we got some new rifles. And hopefully, we'll be able to sight them in today. Let's continue up the trail. And that's, a that's the one that by our thing is really good. Yeah, too, that's not the hugest one we've ever seen, but it's pretty cool. You mean syrup? Yeah, sugar, sugar water. Walk that way. So that's the one caribou and wolf. Is. Or moose and wolf? Moose. That's cool. Uh, yeah, moose and wolf or caribou and wolf. Look at how big it is. That's way bigger than Bandit's Claw. That's a 
big paw. Look at his claw right there. That's his claw or his little finger now. <laughs> the size of that. That's obviously really old. Ooh. Dang it. That's wolf crap. Did it crash? Is that miss? I'd say it's crash, yeah. yeah. It miss. Yeah, this is that hill. Yeah, look. Yeah, there's our camera. There she is. That's what I thought. I saw no, it's nothing. Like it's gone. The bones are gone. Yeah, they took the bones. It's gone. Well, there's fur. It broke down. I mean, it didn't break down. They ate it. That's part of the stomach. That they didn't eat. Do you remember these trees? How covered they were. This is that really cool tree that I was standing by. That had all the frost on it. No frost anymore. And I wanted to show you this really cool tree behind me because, well, it's a few trees. It's all like crusty looking from all the, the snow and the wind and I think the temperatures as well. And I just think it looks, it looks pretty cool if you look at it. There's a tree under there. They took all the bones. Did you want to keep them? <laughs> No, it's just, it just interesting that it's gone. Yeah, I was expecting. That's really old poop. That's bear poop. Where's the head? He took it. It's gone. Enter. 100% battery still. 1,800 photos. It can take 8,000. After we dropped it off in the winter, we came out here one more time just to kind of check them. And we wanted to get the snow off of them. And it's a good thing we did because they were covered with snow. It gets really windy up here. This one might have been malfunctioning or doing something because it said it had 700 photos. It was that one, actually. Oh, it was that one? Yeah. This so this good. one still has 100% battery. It's been up here for six months. These are, I think they're both on a pitcher mode because we wanted to kind of conserve the battery. But that's pretty good. 100% battery, 1,800 photos. Let's grab this one. This is crazy. All the bones are gone. We brought huge moose bones, a rib carcass, head, everything. They're gone. Everything is just gone. I want only had 10 photos when we left. 100%. It has 641 photos. That's awesome. And it can take 8,900. So it has 641 photos of something. It had 10. Okay, let's take that one off. Do you think, dude? They're gnats. No, no, that is bear poop. See that? That looks like wolf poop to me, huh? Look how big it is. It's like. Mission accomplished, bandit. What do you think this is? See that? I can't believe you found That's that. a bone fragment. They were out here eating it. Look, right here. That? Look at that. They were actually eating, they ate the bones. That's all that's left That's though. all that's left. They were eating them is what's going on. All right, what a success. We got out here, we got the trail cameras. We're gonna get back on the main trail and I think we're gonna go a little further, do some exploring. See where we end up today. Do you see that huge feather? It has big feathers. So what is that? That is, is that a pintail? Yes, Look sir. at the blood. Oh, that just happened. That's Here's its foot. It's a duck. Wait, what the heck is going on? That's a duck. An eagle or something, I bet, got a duck. Still blood? You mean up in the air? Up in the air and came down here and ate it. That's old. That's like skin. Is it that was, not a pintail? Something ripped it apart. That's the skull. It's a magpie. Is it not? It's a little duck. You know what it is? You know what it is? It's one of those, they're a type of gall, I think. It's a traveling bird that has, um, I'll look up a photo of it when we get home. Oh, 
That's a marshland down there, hon. What's that? It's a marshland? It is, yeah. A lot of water. Like connection. There's of actually a, a creek or a river. See the kind of tan right behind it? Perfect. Let's do this. Neat, huh? Like that? Made it myself. We're going to be doing some shooting out here. We're sighting in some new rifles that we got that I'm pretty excited for. And since we've moved to Alaska, our primary hunting rifle is a 270. And this is a 270 round right here. And it's a pretty popular, like a, like a deer hunting round, maybe elk. For moose, it's a little small. For caribou, it's probably pretty good. Black bear, it's a good round. But we've been in the market for a new gun or a new rifle. And they just so happen to go on sale. So we picked up two new rifles and each one of them was $500 off, which was a deal we just couldn't pass up on. These are made by Christensen Arms. I love the way it looks. It's pretty cool with the kind of gold or copper barrel. It's got like some uh, crazy camo job on there. And we've got a Vortex scope on there, which was also on sale. Very lightweight rifle compared to our old one, which was made in 1986. Uh, it's a huge improvement for when you're hiking it around and let's see we got two different ones in two different chambers other than that They're exactly the same. This first one here is a 300 PRC and it's that Absolutely massive round. This is it compared to the 270 that we've been shooting So there is a big difference. It's a huge round that's moving really fast this is going to be great for moose, grizzly bear, anything huge. And then the other one is called a 6.5 PRC. And that's this one right here. A lot smaller of a bullet, a lighter bullet, but you can tell by how, how thick that round is. This thing's really going to be moving and this is going to be a great gun for pretty much everything else. Caribou, black bear, things like that. I don't think I'm going to shoot the 270 today, but we're going to get, uh, we're gonna to try to get both these sighted in. I've got our target set up right now at 100 yards. Another cool thing about these rifles is they have like a built-in muzzle brake on them. And let's see, that one will come. And they just kind of screw off. So we'll see if that does anything. I'm expecting this uh, 300 PRC to have quite the kick. Let's see, largest rifle I've ever shot. I guess is my 4570. So this thing should put a hurting on my shoulder. These rifles are brand new and I didn't lube it up at home, but I remembered, so I threw a little bit of a uh, gun oil in there. I'll put a little bit on the bolt and I'm gonna start with this big bad boy first. I think Ariel's gonna hike down the trail a while with a uh, bandit since these guns are so loud and we'll see if we can get them sighted in. Unfortunately, the dog is completely deaf, so we want to take care of what little hearing he has left. I'm going to take him on a little stroll and maybe I'll uh, do some glassing myself. See if I see anything. I'll come get you when I'm done. Okay, have a good time. Hon. Shoot good. Aim good. Shoot straight. <laughs> have a good time. Well, let's get this show on the road and got one of the targets set up down there. So when you hit it, it'll tell you where you're hitting and we're going to try to get it zeroed in. We're exactly, or my feet took me to exactly 100 yards. We'll start there. The ammo we're shooting is Hornady Match. Unfortunately, this is like good ammo. It's expensive. This is 20 rounds. Each one of these rounds is $3 each. So this is not a cheap rifle to get sighted in. But once you get it sighted in, we're good to go. The other rounds we're using for the 6.5, these were a lot cheaper. So this, uh, these are like two bucks. Yeah, a little less than two bucks a round. Still expensive, but they didn't have any like range ammo for uh, this caliber. Let's see what happens. All right, looks like three rounds plus one in the chamber. Okay, we got it done. Mine took 
about a half a box, thankfully, three quarters of a box because it was hitting the paper um, just right off the bat. The other gun, which we're going to call Ariel's gun because she's probably going to be carrying that a little more, the 6.5. Uh, I had to walk about 50 yards closer to see where I was hitting, backed it up, got it sighted in. That one took a box and a quarter. Both really nice rifles, the 300. Uh, less recoil than I thought, but man, that thing has some power. You got to like, you got to bite your teeth down when you're shooting that thing. It rattles your head. And this gun, the 6.5, that's probably my favorite gun. This thing is awesome. Not much recoil, and you can just tell that bullet is flying. So super cool gun. We got them sighted in. I think the plan is we saw a lake from up here and we're gonna try to make it there. And then we know there's another trail down at the bottom of the trail we just came in. So we're gonna head that way and we'll see what happens. So that's the one for bears? This one is, you, Carib could, you could do moose, caribou, anything, but yeah, it's a smaller round. It's a, uh, it's really nice. The other one's the moose gun. You're only gonna shoot it one time, yeah. maybe two times. That's true. This one, you're only gonna shoot it one or two times too, but sighting them in, uh, you could just tell this one's just completely different. You'd have a really good time shooting this. I think you should come this way. We hope to cook our dinner out on the trail, but we never really did find a good spot. Uh, the next place we went ended up being too dusty. So we're back at the cabin and we're cooking up dinner. We have some black bear burgers on the menu um, with all the fixins. Our neighbors shared some black bear with us. We ground it up earlier this morning, believe that or not. And uh, we mixed in just a teeny tiny bit of lard in there. So they're gonna be very big burgers. You want yours medium rare? <laughs> oh, you don't have to. Doesn't matter. <laughs> That'll be mine. It's okay, a little extra flavor never hurt anybody. Bear meat's getting there, and you want to cook it thoroughly all the way through. So we're going to overcook it, and then we're going to put a bunch of fixings on there. Let's see, we got some stuff from the store, but then we also have homemade mustard, pickles, homemade buns. Mayonnaise, mozzarella cheese, and uh, onion, tomato, and lettuce. So it's gonna be really good. Oh yeah. We're excited to try these. They are super cooked, which is how we like our meat. Anyways, I was pretty um, like taken aback when I was processing the bear a little bit because the muscles were so developed, kind of scary, and it was very, uh, it had a lot of fat on it, which is pretty cool. That's why we're interested in hunting bear. We've tried it once before. Twice. Twice. Yep. I don't remember having like any certain thoughts. It was decent. I mean, I don't really remember. Mm, yeah, it just tastes like meat. So we're going to give these ones a go. It's like a Mondo burger. I know, it's huge. It's huge. Got like doubles and triples of it. Tell you right now, it's better than the hamburger. 
Like a beef? Can you remind me of the second time we had it? <laughs> I only remember the, the canned first. bear meat. Oh! We have had it twice. That's killer. Holy cow. Yeah, it tastes like an amazing burger. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the fat. It's like got real rich. I'm trying to think of what it tastes like. <clears throat> Nothing really. It just tastes like it has really good texture and flavor. It tastes like an awesome burger. That was a fun day out there. We're going to devour these burgers. <laughs> yep, and we got a lot of trail camera photos to look at. We've been looking forward to it for six months, and now we get to finally do it. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we got some good footage to show you guys. The bread's really good, too. But the whole thing is just like an excellent... Man, falling apart on me. You squish mine down with your hand really hard. You want to try it? What do you wow. think we're going to see first on the trail camera? I think it's coyote or lynx or wolf. Birds. Birds. That's a good call. service and I guess a, a checkup on her. <laughs> You're a rookie. Nice day out there, right? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> You're smiling. <laughs> okay, let's start again. Okay. Pretty nice day out there, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, we're gonna have one of our mechanics. <laughs> okay. Nice day out there, right? Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> we're gonna have one. <laughs> Pretty nice day out there? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, we're gonna have our mechanics take a look for you and get you on a jiffy. <laughs> okay. Can I have you pop the hood, uh, sir? It's out there. Okay, here's the wheels. What down. year is this? Down, down. Right there. Pull it to the side and then push the hood up. Thanks. Figure it out myself. Sorry about the wait, sir. Oh, me too. It took a while. Well, I am sorry, but we have a list for you of things that are wrong. You're such, what's your deal? You're bad. You're no good. <laughs> I would have had so many tomatoes thrown away right now. I would be crying in the back okay, of the Okay, go ahead. Runneth down my body. Turn off the camera. I'm sick of being recorded. I'm not even in it. So I could see it's too bright behind us. <laughs>